What's up, gang? Welcome to another edition of the New Ham. My name's Scott, call sign W4OLV. Today we're going to do a review on the Yaesu FT4XR. And stay tuned because I'm going to tell you how you can win this very radio. Welcome back. So we're going to take a look at the Yaesu FT. 4XR. So one of the reasons I'm doing this video is because every forum that I'm in, every Facebook group that I'm in, I'm constantly hearing new amateur radio folks ask, what's a good radio to start with? So I kind of set out on this quest to find a sub $100 radio that's a good entry level radio. And I had just a few pieces of criteria for that. One, it had to be dual band, UHF, VHF. Second, it had to be sub $100. I had to be able to get it to my doorstep for less than 100 bucks. And the third was I wanted it to be from a reputable, well-established company uh, such as such as Yesu, ICOM, Kenwood, something of that nature. I kind of avoided the, the Baofeng, uh, Chinese radio variants for a reason. As I began to look, I found this particular radio on Gigaparts website for $69.99. The first step was to check some of the specs, make sure it would fit what I was looking for. Uh, so of course it was sub 100. You got a reputable brand, a reputable brand with Yesu, and it was dual band. The other part was I wanted to check and see a few things and I'm gonna look at the specs here real quick and just kind of run over them with you. Uh, dimensions and weight are fantastic for this radio. You've got 2.1 width, you've got three and a half in height, and then the thickness on it is 1.2 inches and it weighs 8.82 ounces. So super light, super compact. And just to kind of give you a comparison, it's actually just slightly smaller than the Baofeng is. And uh, I kind of feel like you can tell that it's a little better quality just from the feel and, and the heft of this particular radio compared to a Baofeng. Uh, the battery is 1750 milliamps, so you're looking at 15 hours of operation. Uh, on VHF and you're looking at about 12 and a half on UHF depending upon the amount of transmission time you have and it takes the battery roughly three and a half hours to fully charge. You get 200 memory channels. It also does receive FM broadcast from 68 to 108. You get the weather channels that are pre-programmed. It does have the severe weather alert. You get the priority channel scan capability uh, it is Vox capable uh, if you get the optional earpiece and microphone. Uh, you have two quick recall keys that are programmable down here in what would be your lower right hand corner. Uh, it has a VFO split mode. It has a one watt speaker, which kind of amazed me. But in listening to this little radio just briefly, I can tell you it has great volume. The, to the tonal quality is really good as well. Uh, it does have 10 pairs of PMS memory channels, meaning you can define a lower and upper part of the band and scan through that. Uh, it has ARTS, which is the Automatic Range Transponder System, meaning if you have that activated and somebody else has that activated, you will be able to know when you are within range of each other, which is great if you have a number of radios within a group of folks and you want to make sure you're within range of each other, that will, that will help you there. Busy channel lockout, and it is PC programmable, and we will come back to that point in just a moment. Now, what do you get in the box? So in the box, of course, we get the radio itself, antenna, and the battery. One of the big bonuses I found is it does come with the charging cradle. 
Uh, having a rapid charging cradle is great. I'm kind of an organizational person, so being able to just have that stand up on the desk out of the way is fantastic. Of course, we have the cord and we have the belt clip. And that's what comes in the box. Now for what doesn't come in the box, and that is a programming cable. That is one of the cons for me. All the other VAC radios that I purchased have had a programming cable in the past. This one does not. It is an additional $20. So if you want to program it via PC, it is going to cost you an additional $20 to get that. However, the software is downloadable. It is free from the ASU website, so you don't have to worry about paying for software, just strictly the cable itself. The other con to this radio is it is only a single watch radio, meaning you can only monitor one channel at a time. And you'll see there on the screen that it's only going to display one channel at a time. I, I don't mind that as a beginner. I think as a beginner, that's probably just fine. Uh, my problem is, is I've just gotten used to using uh, this particular radio, which of course has the dual watch on it. Uh, so I'm able to listen to and monitor two channels at one time. Now, when I we were talking about the programming cable, and we'll come back to that for just a moment. This is keypad programmable. You don't have to have the cable. You don't have to have the software. You can just simply key all of this in. Now, it does take a little time. It's time consuming. They have quite a few little nested menus in here, but I can show you that it's actually pretty quick. Uh, I'll put in one of our repeater frequencies here. And you'll also notice there that the frequency offset is automatically set for you. And I've, I've played with this radio just a little bit to see, and almost all of the repeaters that I plugged in here, the offset automatically set itself. So you shouldn't have a problem with that. Down here, the lower side is the function key, and then the zero also functions as the set key. What you do is you'll hold the function key, hit the set key, that puts you into the menu, and you can scroll through the menu just using the up and down button here on the right. And I'm, I hope you all can see that. Let me try it again. But you can basically go back and forth and all we need to do is, of course, we just need to go to squelch type. And once we get to that menu item, we will hit the function key. It's currently turned off. We're just going to turn it on. We have receive tone, transmit tone. We're going to put the transmit tone on there. We're going to hit the function key to exit that again. And then we're just going to scroll to menu item 38, which is the tone frequency. Uh, we will hit function key again. Now in this one, you're going to notice it has off and then there's an R after it. That is the tone for receive. We want the tone for transmit, so we have to hit the star key over here. Uh, and now you will see it says off T. Well, all we got to do is use the up and down key again. We're going to tone 131.8. You'll see we have that set now and we'll hit the function key. So that it's that simple to set a repeater and repeater tone. So when we hit this now, what we should get is we should get a response from our repeater. And that's it, folks. So you can see that it's a pretty easy radio to program just from the keypad. The only thing about it is, is, is if you have multiple repeaters, to program from the keypad is going to take you a little while. It's going to be kind of time consuming if you don't have a PC available to do the work for you. For me, as a beginner, 
this is a great radio coming from a reputable, well-established company. Uh, you're not going to have any of the problems that some folks experience with Baofeng as far as the difficulty in programming. Uh, some of the non-compliance for Baofeng it can be an issue. Uh, there's a lot of tests out there that show the majority of Baofeng radios are not within FCC compliance. What I can tell you is, is with Yaesu or with any of the more what I would consider well-established companies, they're going to uh, also be in compliance. Now, with the fact that they're in compliance, all of the features and the price, I don't think you can go wrong with this radio. You can, even if this just ends up being a radio you just throw into your truck, throw into your car, uh, your everyday carry bag, or if you have a younger uh ham radio enthusiast on your hands who's maybe uh, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old that's looking for their first handheld radio, it's hard to beat this. And it's also something that they can throw in their bag. They can put it in their bag, have it with them on a daily basis. And if there is an emergency, they will still have a way to reach out if cell phone systems are down. So really a great little radio. If you get the opportunity, I would highly suggest getting your hands on one. In the beginning of the video, we said we were gonna give this radio away. Let me get a couple of formalities out of the way. Uh, this is not a YouTube sponsored giveaway, nor is it sponsored by Yesu or Gigaparts where I purchased the radio. This is strictly out of my pocket, and it's just my way of paying it forward to the amateur radio community. And hopefully we can get this hardware into the hands of somebody who's new and looking to get started. However, those of you who've been in the amateur radio game for a while, don't be discouraged. Uh, you all are welcome to join the drawing as well. All I need you to do is a couple of things for me. Subscribe and comment down in the comment section I'm in so I know that you're interested in being included in the drawing. I think whoever wins this is going to be extremely happy with it and hopefully you'll comment back once you get it in your hands and let me know what you think of it as well. Thanks again everyone and we'll see you next week on The New Hand.